السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على المبعوث رحمة للعالمين نبينا محمد وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين وبعد All praise is due to Allah سبحانه وتعالى Blessings and salutations upon Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم We ask Allah سبحانه وتعالى to bless him and all his companions to bless every single one of us to bless our offspring those to come up to the day of Qiyamah May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala keep them all steadfast on this deen and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala keep us as well steadfast on the deen. This evening as we were reading the salah, the taraweeh, so a thought came to my mind and that is a hadith of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam narrated by Aisha radiallahu anha. She says that she used to watch the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam read salah at night so often most of the night, almost all of the night. To the degree that his feet became swollen. And she asked him a question. She says, Oh Messenger of Allah, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Allah has kept you free from sin. And Allah has forgiven you, in fact, anything to come and anything that was. There is nothing. You have such a high rank. You are so high, you know your rank. So why is it that you are spending so much time in salah that your feet are actually swollen? And he answered so beautifully. And I think we should all be thinking of it because none of our feet are swollen right now. Yet we find it so difficult to stand for one hour sometimes. May Allah make it easy for us. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us a lesson from the answer of this most beloved creature of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He says, أَفَلَا أَكُونَ عَبْدًا شَكُورًا Should I not be a slave who is grateful, who is thankful to his creator for the status that he was granted? Subhanallah. So with him, he had the status, he knew it, he had this link with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and he wanted to please Allah even more. So that's what made him happy. It made him happy when he could stand and his legs were swollen because of standing for his own creator. I want to ask a question and a serious question. What makes us happy? Let's be frank, let's be honest. If you struck a good deal and today business was brisk, we become happy. If we're feeling healthy and our sickness is gone, we become happy. If we've just purchased clothing that fits us nicely and it looks good, we become excited. This is what makes us happy. If for example, we've purchased a new vehicle and it's sitting there in the front, we're happy. MashaAllah. If for example, we've won a ticket to Hawaii or Honolulu for a holiday, we're excited, we're happy. Let's be honest. This is what makes us happy. If our salaries have increased and our hours have decreased, we become happy. Yes. Now let's take a look at the lesson that we have. From this blessed hadith of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, yes, it is natural to be happy at what I've just mentioned, but that happiness is momentary. It is just for a moment. It is not supposed to be prolonged happiness. The true excitement must be when your legs start paining and you're standing and you say, "Ya Allah, this is for you." Allahu Akbar. Ya Allah, if it was not for you, I would not even have dressed appropriately. Allahu Akbar. So when you are dressed appropriately, covering properly, and people are laughing at you and calling you names, you need to say, Ya Allah, this is what makes me so happy. Because I know you're writing next to my name rewards that will grant me entry into Jannah. And Allah says, the criminals used to laugh at the believers in this world the criminals used to laugh at the believers if you are dressed as a muslim woman one of the ways of telling that you are dressed properly is sometime in your life someone will pass a negative comment or someone will laugh at you or someone will say something discouraging then you know you've dressed properly subhanallah because that's allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's plan and i'm talking here of when you are living in a non-muslim country and sometimes even from amongst our own family members, they discourage us. No, you're too young to cover your hair. Don't cover it now. Wait until you grow. How are you going to get married? They're not going to see what the head and shoulders look like in your hair. Allahu Akbar. May Allah safeguard us. This is the mentality that people have. Yet we don't understand. When we cover it for the sake of Allah, it must make us happy. 
Imagine, on one hand we got the example of the swollen legs. What is that example compared to just covering properly? Allahu Akbar. May Allah use us really in His cause. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept us this evening to make a resolution that we will dress appropriately, come what may. And may Allah make us from those who can make a resolution this evening that come what may, we will fulfill our five salah for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It is not worth leaving it out. I was thinking moments ago as I was getting up that for myself, it has rekindled the link with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make mention of how everything began and the creation of Adam alayhi salam and the stories of the prophets. Not to say there was no link, but we rekindled the link and we want to keep that fire going. We want to keep that light going. I wonder if it is the same for all of us that we have this link. We feel that really we are going to return to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala this evening inshallah. We will be completing the story of Adam alayhi salatu wasalam with a few details inshallah. And thereafter we will continue tomorrow with the stories of the other prophets of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. To start with, this Quran we need to understand as I had made mention of at the end of yesterday's talk. That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says we will send for you reminders. And whosoever turns away from the reminders, they will be resurrected blind. If you recall, we made, we made mention of it and we read the verse which happens to be in Surah Taha. And thereafter, there is a point that needs to be highlighted. What did the kuffar of Quraysh used to say at the time of the Prophet wasallam when the Quran was being revealed? They knew that anybody who listens to this Quran, they are automatically inclined towards it. One is to look at the face of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is already a turning point. You need a little bit of sincerity and you're turned. And after that, to listen to the words of the Quran, it melts you. Allahu Akbar. Today, there were so many verses that were read. And I was thinking to myself, I wish I could pause to translate some of those verses. One of them, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, In Oh man, if Allah wills, He can delete you and replace you with others. If Allah wants, He can wipe you out and bring others. In another place in the Quran, Allah says the same thing. That if you are not going to worship Allah, if you want to turn away from Allah's worship, He does not need you, O oh man. He can actually delete you. You know how powerful is that word delete? Imagine if someone had to tell you, I'm going to delete you. And you look at them and say, what? You probably take your gun out for them in this country. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala safeguard us. And here Allah is saying, He's explaining how independent He is and how dependent we are. He says, if, you, if, you, if I so will, I can actually delete you and I can bring others. May Allah never do that to us. So that's a powerful verse. Another verse that we mentioned this evening, that sometimes in order to please people and to seek status, we please people in the displeasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And Allah says, Do they want to seek that status with those people there in the displeasure of Allah? Let them know. It is Allah alone. Who owns the dignity and the status? If Allah wants, He can raise you, and if He wants, He can drop you. There is no point in pleasing people in the displeasure of Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. Rather, if the people are displeased while whilst Allah is pleased, then Alhamdulillah, we are heading in the right direction. So the Quran, I'd like to make mention of a very interesting story at the time of Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam. The kuffar of Quraysh sent one of the most eloquent from amongst them, Utbah ibn Rabi'a to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in order to try and tell him that you know you better stop doing what you're doing. This was in the initial stages and we don't want you to swear our idols. We want you, you know, to take what you want from us but stop preaching all this that you are preaching about one God and one creator and supreme maker. Why did they decide this? Because they were materialistic people. For them, what made them happy when they had power? They were elected as chairman. They were elected as someone big. They became happy. That was the height of their life. And I normally say when someone has got to a peak and they tell me, I've got to a peak. I say, does that mean you can die now? You've achieved what you wanted to from life. With us, no. The peak will only come when Allah decides. We, for us as Muslimin, 
we should be happy when we are obeying the commands of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So these kuffar, they decided, let's go and make him some offer. He'll accept one of the offers. So they made him a few offers. The one went to him and he says, and he was an eloquent man. And he says, oh Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa we want you to leave what you are saying. If you want, we can get you married to the most beautiful of women. If women is what you're looking for. Look at how they're thinking. If wealth is what you're looking for, we make you the wealthiest. If power is what you're looking for, you can be our king and our leader. What is it that you want? We will dish it out to you now, but stop saying what you are saying. And Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa said the famous saying, Wallahi, if you are to put the sun in my right hand and the moon in my left, and then you are to ask me to stop what I'm saying, I'll never stop it. What that means is give me what you want. Give me that which is impossible. This is a mission I have come with. Then he began to read verses of the Quran. Hamim tanzilum min rahim Kitabun fussilat ayatuhu Qur'anan arabiyan liqawmin ya'lamun Bashiran wa nadheera That surah, he continued reading it until he got to a place where he made mention of the punishment of the previous nations. This was the verse. He got to this verse. He says, فَإِنْ أَعْرَضُوا فَقُلْ أَنْذَرْتُكُمْ صَاعِقَةً مِثْلَ صَاعِقَةِ عَادٍ وَثَمُودٍ If they are going to turn away, then warn them of the punishment that got to Ad and Thamud. At this stage, the man puts his hand on the mouth of the Prophet ﷺ and blocks it and says, stop, 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 that's enough. Why? He did not want to hear the punishment. Then he ran back to his people and says, oh my people. He went back to Abu Jahl and the others and he says, you know what? I have heard something today. Recitation, I have heard. It is so sweet. It is so beautiful. It is so correct. It is so apt. It is something that you just feel like continuing listening to. And it has so much in it and so on. And it is definitely not the speech of man. They looked at him, they said, what? We sent you to tell that man to get out of what he's saying and you come back telling us you're almost convinced. He says, no, 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 no. I'm only letting you know what I heard. I'm not convinced. <laughs> Look at this. Look at what happened. Now what happens to us? We listen to the Quran. We read the Quran. We understand the message of Allah. Are we not sometimes being cheated the same way by shaitan? Where we say it's a beautiful Quran. I enjoy listening to this sheikh and that sheikh and this person and that reciter and mashallah this one and that one. But how much are we following it? What's the point of getting the, the, the enjoyment of the ear alone? That was achieved by the kuffar as well. I can tell you a true story. I had stopped one day at the traffic light with the Quran a little bit loud. I don't want to call it blasting, but mashallah it was loud. And there were people right next to me, they looked at me and they said, you know, they, they like sort of putting their thumbs up and I, I put it down to talk to them. They said, I love your music. <laughs> what music is this? So it shows us that if, if we are going to stop at the soothing of the ears alone, then that happens to the kuffar as well. What's the difference? We are supposed to be taking it further and putting practice to what we listen to. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala open our doors and may he grant us a deep understanding. So this is why at that time they did not want to hear any revelation. Shaitan had a plan and that plan was he was going to turn people away from revelation. And this is why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَقَالَ الَّذِينَ كَفَرُوا لَا تَسْمَعُوا لِهَذَا الْقُرْآنِ The disbelievers used to say, do not listen to this revelation. Don't listen to the Quran. Make noise whilst it is being read. Because as people were listening to it, it was piercing their ears, it was piercing their heart.